All right, man, we are back for another episode of Stay Dangerous, the podcast. And we got my boy Westside Boogie yes, in the motherfucking sir. building. Y'all know yes, what's going sir. on. Well, it's like my fourth interview with you. It's my yeah. first time here. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's like your... It's a big moment. It is, it's it is. It's my first time right here, y'all. Yeah, you been coming to the uh, pot to, uh, boss man. Pop a bottle for this right yeah, here. Yeah, but now I mean? we here on our shit. Yeah, Stay oh, Dangerous. Oh, boy, yeah, yeah let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Do y'all know my there boy Kelbo over here? Y'all What's know happening? What's going on. Yeah, I'm I'm the host with the most. Get your bitch ass smoke. That's my it's new intro. Bob <laughs> <laughs> the Boogaloo. First of all, I'ma say uh happy birthday to Bug. You happy know birthday to you too, man. Nah, nah, nah. Happy birthday. Oh, boy, boy. He did not tell me happy I birthday. Told you happy birthday. I'ma be I'm gonna be the bigger man. <laughs> He called me on my birthday and said, I just want to let you know I'm not telling you happy birthday. <laughs> but, but it's my boy, I love you, man. Proud of y'all yeah, niggas. Yeah, man. Proud yeah, of y'all niggas, man. Thank you, definitely. Man, appreciate that. that. We've been pushing, man. So you're not drinking with us? Nah, I don't drink, man. You know, I've been, uh, man, come I'm on, on my third month. Uh, y'all, should, y'all should be supporting my nah, sobriety. Right. I'm not going to be that friend. Friend. This champagne, be man. This ain't yeah, alcohol, yeah. man. It's nothing hard, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, a it's a celebration for y'all birthday, man. So you didn't drink on your birthday either? Nah, I didn't. Oh, okay. People That's were surprised. Look at my boy growing yeah, up. People were surprised. Me and both in here. Yeah, we both in My motherfucking, uh, I had a bowling party that went up, man. I had so much motherfucking fun. Yeah, you wasn't there, you but a star. you, you know, you, you, could, a star. Yeah. you was there in spirit. <laughs> exactly, I was definitely strong to the story, like, damn, she got a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they was there. No, I was, was there. there. They, they was, was there. there. <laughs> Bo was there. Bo always come through. That's fine. Yeah. All right, let's start the interview, man. Hey, uh, who was Westside Boogie before the music? Man, fucking nerd. Uh, <laughs> before the music, nah, I say, like, Typical niggas from around, like, just getting into bad shit, trying to figure his personality out, trying to figure life out. You know, at first I was in church. I don't know, I told this a lot, but, mm-hmm. like, when I was about 12 or 13, my mama sent me to church. Uh, I was in a choir, and then that's where I met Puka. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, it was over. everything was over with after that when I, went, when I met Puka in church. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of Puka, is that, like, yo? So you from Compton, right? Mm-hmm. You know I got an interview. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, Act like you don't know me. Yeah, so you from Compton? Yeah, I was in, but before I got sent to Compton, I was in Long Beach from like from like five to eleven, twelve. Okay. Then okay. I started living. What people. part of Long Beach? Like the north? I was east? on the east. Okay. Yeah, I was on the east. And then you got a security that's still from Long Beach. That's yeah, that's my baby mama cousin. So I met my baby mama. I was in this being a ratchet nigga in Long Beach, and then I met people. <laughs> So, and they start fucking with me. So yeah, my security guard is from. So there. a lot of people don't know that you, uh, from the area that you from and and and, and Compton, your 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 uh, name is not Westside Boogie. It's exactly, Puka. I know. It's Lil Puka. Huh? Yeah, exactly, Lil Puka. And then you the real bud. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're a real good. That's what every time I can get around these, I'm like, hey man, it's Boogie. Don't call me Boogie when you're around. Right, yeah, right, don't right, call right. me that. Nah, but you, you, you earned your name Westside Boogie though. You feel Most saying? definitely. So okay, let's start from the let's start from the beginning as we always do. So um, what what artists do you feel like made you fall in love with hip hop music? Because before before the music, it was who you are, right? Mm-hmm. And then it had to be somebody like, damn, I, I fuck with this nigga. I like what he talking yeah. about. Ooh. What was that artist for you that made you fall in love with the hip hop music? Man, with hip hop, I say it gotta be Lil Wayne. I think just because mm-hmm. my age, he like really the rapper that raised me damn near. Man, um, Wayne went so far. When I first, crazy. it's like the way <laughs> life had a line that one time. It's like I had just got introduced to uh, Thizzles. Mm-hmm. Um, Wayne, oh, that's, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas up all night sitting in the Blue car. Blue Dolphins. Yeah. 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 Blue Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> niggas up all night in the car listening to Lil Wayne verses. Like, damn, this nigga not human. And I'm like, right, I really just wanted to be that good at rapping. Um, and I think when I first started rapping, I was just imitating him so much. Like, I'm just going to rap like Lil Wayne. And I had no sense of like my own self until somebody checked me. Like, you could still be that good, but just rapping like yourself. You know what I'm saying? Telling stuff. your own story. So once I found that out, that I could still be nice and tell my own story, it's like everything changed for me. It's like you have to be there to know that. About no, nobody that. understand oh, how Lil great Lil Wayne was. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't care how good somebody could be at one moment in time, it's the run he had. It's like, that shit was like, 
Facts. Wayne was, was not him. human to us, dog. That shit and he was the he was the first artist that was just making motherfucking songs with no hooks, just yeah, going just crazy, rapping, crazy, just rapping, just bars, bro. Just bars, just bars, just bars. So niggas, we fell in love with Wayne a long time ago. To this day, yeah, Wayne can't do nothing wrong. Man, what? Right. You know what I mean? And it tape so, after tape after tape. Right. And right. it's so, crazy right. to see like Dedication. where music mm-hmm. at now. It's like how. Like basketball, they play be- the basketball different now. It used to be about pick and rolls. Now it's all three pointers. Mm-hmm. Niggas don't care about bars no more. Now it's like, like who gonna make the best song? Which is dope too, but it's just crazy mm-hmm. seeing the shift in music. Like it's like I, more of a vibe. No, exactly. It's, it's, it's more of a vibe now. So look, so what made you start doing music? Music, it gotta be church. It gotta be. When I first got to church, they automatically put all the kids in a choir, and I, I was like, this shit lame as fuck. Uh, Pookie didn't want to do it, and I was like, well, if he ain't got to do it, why I got to do it? <laughs> That's what I was thinking was lame as fuck. When I first got there, I was like, I'm not going to be singing up here, but then I ain't going to lie, I fell in love with that shit. I start being at all the choir rehearsals, front row, and I, yeah. they put me with the uh, soprano. That's the higher singers, because okay. I, had, I hadn't hit puberty yet. My voice was high as fuck, so I was singing with them bitches. Not them bitches. I was, singing, <laughs> I was singing with the women at church, uh, and then they asked me, did I want to do a gospel rap? Mm-hmm. And so I did a gospel rap, and I was like, oh, I, I like rapping. And then I started hanging with Puka too much, so that gospel rapping shit wasn't working. So yeah, it didn't really <laughs> yeah, fit with exactly. The so I just started rapping regular. And then if you if you're a, a true fan, you you know that you got some songs where you do be hitting the notes on the motherfucker. Nah, I feel like yeah. if you if you really listen to my songs, you can tell I think I'm a singer. Like. Right. I be trying to sing all the time. I just can't do it that good. But so, so you were so dedicated to this shit. I heard that you ended up going to school for mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Talk to I ain't gonna lie. It, Big it up really, to that right there. It really was just like a finesse for me. I didn't think like how much it'll pay off. Like oh, I'm so locked in. I'm finna get studio equipment. It was like I need to get financial aid, and I want to go to school. Like I might as well go for something I like doing, and not mm-hmm. interested. Yeah, I was just trying to finesse the check though. But I, I ended up getting a loan from Long Beach City College. They gave me like five, ten racks, and I spent all that shit on studio equipment. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's how, lesson, yeah, fact. Yeah. That's how I know I really wanted it because like niggas get bags and want to invest in themselves. Niggas that get a bag and go like a car with yeah, some rims a car on just to get fly. Like, like yeah, if I get a car, I'm good now. And then blow after the be like whole blow load. the whole bag. <laughs> so, you, that's how you know what a nigga wanted when he really like willing to invest in himself and spend his last on it. And I did, and that shit paid off. I recorded my own first project in my my mama bedroom. Well, not I was at my mama crib in my bedroom. Still 25 years old, still living with my mama, um, with a kid and grinding, grinding, and so that shit paid off. So, what was the first song that you would say that gave you recognition in the music industry? Man, it's either like. I did this song called Bitter Raps where I was just complaining about all the shit I hated at the time. Uh And that kind of like got me interest from the labels, but that was just like conversations. But once I did the Oh My video, had weed in him out there, niggas in red, you know, niggas gonna gravitate to ignorant shit. And I'm just grateful I had the homies supporting me because, you know, it's it's easier to make it in LA if you got your section supporting you. It's just facts. Uh, That's why I always try to look out for the homies. And that's why I always feel guilty too when I can't look out because. I know I've benefited just from being from the hood. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, shit, man. We just appreciate it. No, and I know. And that's what I'm saying. And that's why I'm grateful too that I got a hood that don't even like <laughs> like put that guilt on me. But yeah, once I dropped the Oh My video, niggas like, oh, he legit. We fuck with him. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's set the stage real quick. Like, you're from Compton, uh, Dayton J. Misha. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie. Last one of the interviews, you got me in trouble. <laughs> nah, 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 with Jay Misha? That, no, with. You know who. Uh, I ain't gonna get you in you trouble. Know, this time. You know, yeah, I'm not gonna say that. Let's set the stage. Let's set the stage. Let's Okay, you from Compton. <laughs> yeah. Dame J. Misha, mm-hmm. all in with the music. Yeah. Uh, drop first 40, no, Thirst 48. Mm-hmm. This is June 2014. Boom. What My has boy, space? really, his podcast. You feel what I'm saying? I love it. What <laughs> headspace are you in around that time? June yeah, 2014. So that's where I'm at. I'm Thank living you. with my mama. Jay Misha at my time is just my best friend from high school like we never fucked around she used to be like halfway gay and she you know you got that girl that just don't want to fuck on none of the homies because she don't want to just become that home girl she just right. really want to be a home girl mm-hmm. but all of us liked her d-way liked her damn near uh you know what i'm saying we all had a little Who's crush d-way your cousin exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> d-way your d-way. cousin <laughs> okay <laughs> she, my boy d-way had a crush on we D-way's all had a, we all had a crush on her you know what i'm saying she was a home girl but none of us was fucking around like that uh and so yeah, one day I heard this beat 
And I was like, man, I'm about to use this and slide on Jay Misha on this beat. And mm -hmm. it was this song I made. I just was like explaining her. I had a crush on her in high school. And like, if she gave me a chance, I'd slide. In my brain, I'm like, yeah, she gonna let me hit off this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. Got I, to. I played it for her and yeah, that shit was wild. Like, oh, so this, she did let you yeah. hit off this. Damn. Like two days later, we was in a relationship and it was like, it felt, wow, like, it felt like, like serious. Yeah, it felt like something I, I had already wanted. Like, and it was just so easy to transition into a relationship because she was already my best friend. So, so yeah, the chemistry that shit was, was already, already there. there. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is mm -hmm. my wife. Um, but unfortunately, music does it again. Yeah, fact. Music but unfortunately, we were both in bad head spaces and didn't know even how to express love. So it was like it was just a toxic relationship, built off the makeup sex part, like arguing all day just so we can go fuck later type shit. Okay. So, so when when you dropped that shit, right? That tape, were you heavily motivated after that, or how was that? Nigga, I was so motivated, nigga. I was like, my life finna change. Uh, I had signed the Interscope. Mm -hmm. I was locked in, but. At the same time, I, I did tell myself shit was like going to get easier because I'm signing a major label deal. So I, I think I did kind of let my foot off the gas mm -hmm. uh, when I initially got signed. And also just like dealing with the relationship part of it, her not being able to like navigate with me being a famous rapper now and me having my own in insecurity issues. Like, I don't know. I didn't balance. I didn't balance everything in life great at that time. So, but you dropped that in 2014, right? But you didn't sign to Interscope in 2017, right? No, I signed to Interscope in 2015. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. like, yeah, 2015, maybe 2016, so, but yeah. So, so oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, so with that being said, like, what was it like being a West Coast artist on Shady Records and, you know, being signed to Interscope? Yeah. What was it like? So, first, it was just Interscope. Shady okay. didn't, Eminem didn't take over my contract until like a couple years later. And so at, in 2015, um, I got this white manager uh, mm -hmm. named Clayton who okay. had found me through Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? As a nigga, I'm just like, oh, white nigga hit me on Twitter. I made it. He became my manager at the time. I didn't even like make him like go against other managers. I just picked him as my manager. Yeah, uh, you didn't make him yeah, compete or nothing. Nothing at all. So this was my manager. He never, he didn't come from a rap background. He came from like an EDM space. Okay. So he didn't really have no background with rappers, especially a nigga from Compton, like Correct. from the hood, and he trying to push me. So at Interscope, it got it got stagnant. Them niggas damn near put me on the shelf just because with labels they don't care to like develop you these days. They want you to come polished already. Yeah, they come like, already. Come yeah. already ready to go. And I wasn't ready to go. I still need the artist development, and they didn't have the patience for that. And they shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they're them. major. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I get it. So uh, for like two years, I was just on the shelf. Um, just sitting at Interscope, I had a crib in Burbank that I used, that I bought with my advance. Mm -hmm. um, just spending, just spending, not really making no money, but spending all my advance for like a year or two. Then at the end of the first year, they like, oh yeah, you owe taxes too. When you make over a certain amount of money, you got to pay at the end of the year. Yeah. So basically, you was getting your advance and you was just spending. And not spending. even blowing. Not really that. Uncle yeah. Sam on his yeah, cut fact. too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, you know, niggas don't got no financial literacy. No, you know no, what I'm saying? No, no. We used to, at the end of the year, I'm going to hit my baby mama to get tax taxes. Taxes. Not, not, not paying. Not me paying. Yeah. So they, he like, oh, you owe 40000 <laughs> I had only, I had, I didn't have 40000 no more. I had, already, <laughs> I had like $15,000 left. So I'm crying. Like, man, I don't know what the fuck. I'm scared how dumb I'm going to look if I go back to the hood. And I'm a nigga who just like got signed. Yeah. So now, now I'm faking it. I'm broke, but still outside acting like I'm the signed rapper with some money. And that's that shit was tough. I ain't gonna lie. 2015 through 2017 was hard. Um, but yeah, you just gotta stay locked in. And then like two years later, uh, my A and R Tim Glover was like, "It's this new management company from uh, ATL called LVRN, and I think you should lock in with them. It's five black dudes." Oh, so that's yeah. how you found mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So, so let me ask this. Yeah. Um, Yo, the manager before that, was he kind of like a, like a crackhead a little? No, you <laughs> are a fucking crackhead. Actually, wow. Crackhead, but you know, wow. not like that. But you know, white people, they got, they look like they do different type of drugs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so was he fucking up the money? Nah, it you know wasn't, I mean? it wasn't that. But I don't think he was like proactive enough in going to find money instead of like, there wait, go. when you already got there money, go. you're not going to go get like, Little over. bags that uh, that could benefit me, like little five thousand dollar plays, because he only gonna get this percentage from it. Correct. So he not motivated to even go chase them type of plays. He got you know a pillow saying? somewhere. Yeah, somewhere and so motivated. he looked out for me though. Like it's been times I was homeless. He let me stay at his crib. He helped me get my apartment before I like let him go. And even when I did let him go, he didn't like tell me I owed him no money. He didn't tell me like 
I was in bad with, blood. No, nah, he just was like, I understand, man. You hit your ceiling, right. and I want to see you win. So I'm like, I remember you told me a story from him that um, one day you was somewhere and you uh, was walking on stage and you and somebody banged on each other or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Then the manager was like, oh, I guess that's a black thing. Yeah, that's some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just it was also new to him. him even, him, even when he used to come to the hood, he used to that's just be different. Like, what the fuck is Different. this? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, Culture shock. Yeah, so then at that same time too, uh, Paul Rosenberg, who was Eminem manager, uh-huh. somehow found my music at the same time. Like I linked up with LVRN and it was just like, God, just so, press so, play. So, press play which is uh, Justin wears cool pants. Justin, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't, he, he didn't have to pitch pitch you like, oh, I saw nah, Summer Walker, they, they took, fuck with us, or somebody just... See, I was signed to them, them right before Summer came, so it, all they oh, were, he was oh yeah, before. they had Black, uh, my boy Black, Black yeah, and, Black and, yeah, and they Black. had Drum, um, yeah, 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 so they did have artists, but I was just like, man, it's five Black niggas, like, who got they... Who got some pool at Interscope? I didn't yeah. really give a fuck, honestly. That's let's rock. Yeah, let's rock they took out. me to dinner. They told me what they wanted, what their plans was, and I was like, let's go. Then we went to the studio, and them niggas was like the most honest, Justice specifically, the most honest nigga I ever been with in the studio. Like mm-hmm. telling me songs is trash, and I I wasn't used to that shit. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't used to that's it. Right. But that's real okay. right there. Let's back it up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So. uh the first 48 take, did you have a kid before then? Yeah, yeah, I had my baby in 2000, he was born in 2009. Okay, yeah, so, so yeah, he was like five yeah. years old, he okay. was like five years old. Okay, does he does he listen to your music? Certain songs, he he like, he think I'm trash for real, for real, I ain't gonna lie. He like, <laughs> that's crazy. He don't think I'm trash, but I just, <laughs> yeah. it's like, he's, he's not, not there yet. Yeah. Like, my there. emotional intelligence, he ain't touched that level yet, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right, but right, if, right. like, my <laughs> ignorant songs, he gonna fuck with my ignorant songs. And he like, nonchalant, like, that's like the only singing song I made that he ever really rock with, but, you know, he better like it, he play for all that basketball. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and Baby Moms, y'all, y'all smooth. Yeah, we good. Co-parenting. Great good. co-parenting. That's one of my best friends. I was going to say, he dope at basketball, right? No, he really like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So really what does he, that. what is he into? Sports? Yeah, basketball? he into sports and girls. Um, oh, he yeah, and the girls now? Nah, it's the not girls. more of they, uh, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Like, a month, like three weeks ago, I got a text from him saying, Dad, do we know him? It's a picture of me and you. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and he like. <laughs> what? I guess he friends with your daughter. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, look at me at the no, that's what I told her. I said, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't got time for that. You ain't gonna lie. No, cause she she send me all type of people like that. They these people know you. That person know you. Yeah. They say that they dad know you, so she send me yeah. shit just like and that. He, he all like that. That's your friend. Like that's my boy. Yeah, facts, facts, brothers, brothers. Have your old son ever taught you any valuable lessons? Because kids can oh, teach man. you. Man, let me tell people. you. That's the frustrating part when you got to learn stuff from your kid mm-hmm. and they really show you, show you that like growing a forever process. It's not like no ending limit to growing. It's like a forever right. thing. And yeah, my, I learned like my patience could get better at times. Um, like I, re- I react with anger sometimes instead of listening to people. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm just listening like, oh, I'm finna attack. Instead of just like listening to what you're saying and really taking and processing. it. And processing it. You know what I'm saying? And not feeling, being so defensive all the time. Um, yeah. And just like him being a reflection of me just lets me know it's stuff I got to do better for myself. Like when I see him like not have compassion towards his mom at times, that just teach me like I need to be better at my relationship with my mom because mm-hmm. that's where he's getting this from. So, that's what he's seeing. Yeah. So exactly. I'm just leading by example. And, um. That's big, right? Knowing that he always watching for real, yeah. How do you want your son to remember you guys? When people Man, mention his dad. That's so tough because like I be trying to check myself to make sure it's not an ego thing because I, I want that nigga to be like, Yeah, that nigga sacrificed everything for me. He paid for all my basketball shit. You know what I'm saying? That's like my ego telling me, like, nigga, give me kids, credit. Like kids don't see You know what I'm saying? Way. But they don't and so when they don't see them sacrifices at times it get frustrating. But I just want him to know like Nigga, I did give my all for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. Well, yeah. it's so much shit I wouldn't do if it wasn't for him. Like, you know Definitely what I'm saying? Stop and, and yeah, doing a whole so, lot. Whole lot. Whole lot. <laughs> like, I don't want nobody else raising me. Nah, child, facts. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that's big. Super mindful of everything I do. In your music, I've I've heard you talk about struggles, about you know, kind of like, you know, the black black kids getting you know going through evictions and stuff yeah. like that. How was that going through that evictions with moms and all that? It didn't happen to kids, you know what I mean? And going through that with the child, right? Man, this 
I think as a kid, that shit just feels so regular to you. Like, you don't know that. Like, me, us sneaking into apartments cause that we just got evicted out of. I wasn't it's even, fun. I didn't even, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I was like, man, we just living on the edge. Just going to stay at my grandma's house, like, uh, on the floor. I'm like, fuck it, it's family time. And then when you get older, you like, damn, we was really in that situation. And then you kind of get mad at your parents for having you in that, like, like how you wasn't working hard enough to where we didn't have to struggle like that. I catch myself doing that and like realizing so you get grown. Yeah, you like nah, this shit hard. This you shit feel me? Like yeah. her just doing that much. Well, is like what's... one thing I learned in life, like you can never um, really fault them for what they've been through because everybody got their own yeah, personal own trauma, trauma fact, you know, yeah. that they deal with and they go through. And we might not see it, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because uh-huh. we kids, and especially when you get a little bit older, but you don't see like you know, mom is going through. Jobs not calling yeah, her, fact. you know what I mean? She putting in applications, yeah, but fact. you know what I mean? Yeah. Can't get it. Fact. And it's like, you know what I mean? So you got to really understand it when you get to a certain age that, you know, they didn't do, you know, mm-hmm. they did the best they could, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And they didn't do that intentionally. Yeah. When you stay at that grandma house and had them fun days, mm-hmm. those was because, you know what I mean? Mom's really like, man, I had to go try to do something, fact. you know what I mean? Fact. And my kids yeah, so over safe. here, and uh-huh. it's, a safe, it's a safe haven, you know what I mean? And that's why it really takes a community. So I'm glad. I'm glad I have family like that. Um, yeah, that shit a beautiful thing for real. For and, real, for real. And yeah, so like, yeah, even growing up and my mama making me feel like I got to be tough all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, I can't share my emotions. Come from her feeling like she got to be tough all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, just, just it's all the cycle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's all it is. Yeah. And you know, to take where you really kind of like opened up like that was... Uh, the reach for mm-hmm. me. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm it's no secret that that was still my favorite uh, <laughs> mixtape. You know what I mean. Real one. So, your lyricism and passion and the reach uh, was was that mixtape a statement for you? Do you think yeah. like motherfucker like this is what the fuck I really do? Yeah, I think like there's forty eight. I was just like in the crib making some shit, and I knew it was good, and I was trying to get on. But the reach was really me trying to prove my point, like. I, I deserve to be, and I belong to be yeah. here. I didn't get signed for no Facts. reason. This was like, I got to show y'all. And plus, I was already dealing with like feeling like I'm finna be back in the hood. It was like I was in the hungry bag. So, yeah, my mind state. I remember I was staying with my at my girl Sheree crib. I was dating this Mexican girl. That was my first time dating a Mexican. <laughs> and yeah, she was taking me to the studio every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and right after that, I ended up getting back with Jamisha as soon as I dropped the project. It's like I used her to stay there. <laughs> so I was working on the project. Hey, we do. We got to be real. Whoever you are. But now, now Sheree and Jamisha friends like shit. That <laughs> should be wild to me. So how was that for Lil' Man? You know, um, I say you made him a part of history by putting him on the cover and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. How was that mm-hmm. day for him? I mean, I know I had to be in the excitement. Man, that nigga don't care. He didn't even, like, at that yeah, time, he was just fun. like, I really got to pay my kid to do anything. Like, <laughs> any type of content, it's like, pay me. Or I, like, he, I, I'm glad he know his worth, but I feel like he be finessing me too, but it's all good. <laughs> as so, they all do, they all finesse Yeah, I think yeah. now, now that he a teenager, he, like, more appreciative now. He, like, a, a post my stuff when he feel like it's dope. But back then, he didn't understand what was going on. And... Me putting him on a cover was, was super dope to me, but now what I did recently is I've been giving him uh, publishing all my projects and all my songs, so that's really the dope so part for me. Like, like, like when he get 18, you yeah. he gonna have a check waiting for him, so. Now it's, now it's good there for us, kid, too. Yeah, that's hard. That's so, like, I got a question, like, going more to the music side of things, like, mm-hmm. how was it for your first tour? Like, you feel me, when you went on your first tour? Man, that shit was lit, and then it got depressing, depressing as hell, because... As an opener, like, uh-huh. especially your first time going on tour, you never really know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And you also used to being that nigga in your crew. You used to <laughs> being like, everybody here because they want to see you boogie yeah. to win. But mm-hmm. now I'm like, here opening up for a bigger nigga and they treating me like, like shit. You know what I'm saying? Tori, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was Tori, my first Tori was my first tour. Mm-hmm. Tori and was. even though, like, he treated me great. <laughs> At times, he's still gonna act like the artist, and he gonna not a diva, but he's gonna be the nigga as he should yeah, be. It's his and his sword. crew it's is gonna make sure he's straight. And with my my stuff that I need, gonna come second. So right. it was tough. It was an ego check because I'm a nigga from the hood too. You know, niggas not gonna be talking to me like this. Straight like up. y'all not right. even from LA. <laughs> like, y'all not from yeah. LA. Y'all from Canada. I'm trading yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, from the like, you know I'm so, <laughs> I, just, I remember coming home, uh, coming back from being out one day, and we come back to the tour bus, and tour manager like. 
yeah, everybody tour want to talk to y'all. I need to sit down. And they like got the whole tour like sitting in a circle like we kids. Like, like wow. Yeah, 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 about yeah, niggas like, like, goose. yeah, niggas like, <laughs> yeah, somebody keep taking Tory weed. Like somebody in his crew. So he like, so Tory talking to niggas about taking his weed. And I'm just looking at this nigga like, I know you're not talking. Why are you talking to everybody <laughs> like, about somebody? I'm saying, that's something your crew that yeah, took from you. I'm going to call our face, but, he, <laughs> but he, was, he was a real nigga. And he, he, he opened his platform to me at times. He didn't have to like. What's dope? What a headliner do? That's dope for the openers. That they'll bring them back out during they set because they know the crowd ain't gonna be there really to the headliner performing. Correct. So Tori used to bring me out during my during his set to do Oh My, which was my most viral song at the time. So that shit helped. Um, so shout out to Tori, and he the best performer I ever seen in my life. Who else? Who yeah. else you, you went on tour with? Uh, after besides, Tori, that was, that was like after uh, Tori, it was Joey name. Badass. Yeah, um, I was on tour. that was worse than the Tori one because. <laughs> His crew was just mean, you know what I'm saying? That's my nigga. Joy really like my brother, but his crew was just like mean. So that was tough just because like it's an ego check. You know you what I'm saying? You talking about big boy that play on um Yeah uh Power? Uh-huh, yeah, wow. yeah. Damn, okay. That was my that's my nigga. Um yeah, but he just had a tour manager that was an asshole. And so that tour was tough for me. Then after that, I did one with Denzel Curry. Okay. Dope as hell. Mm-hmm. That's my nigga. His whole crew was dope. It started getting better after that more and more um because i started understanding and understanding how to move too and also when you go back to these cities you could build relationships with people that's well, from yeah, there exactly. so i started going back getting free weed make it a little easier and shit like that um actually moving yeah, around exactly. in the cities and, and you know what i mean yeah. yeah and then i did black um and he we both like label mates so that was easy because we got the same manager so niggas was treating me right on that tour and it's that's like me that's it's that's like that's years that's of me opening up for niggas before i could go on my own tour and then i, I did and then i did eminem the final one was Eminem. We did some European shit, and well, then so that was just like a, a brief tour, a brief yeah. That was European like five tour. dates, um, but eighty thousand people a show. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, that's big. one show Ooh, more than all the all the t- tours I didn't did combined type shit. So what city over there probably was like the best city? You know? London was nuts. Ooh. They said they broke a record. It was and I like, want to get to London. Y'all. That shit was nuts. Does your followers <laughs> go? Does your followers go up after the show? Or like yeah, they do. Are they, you can, are just I mean, stream and go up. Yeah, or, like, nah. Like, I would say like if you really go off and depending on the like the capacity like at Eminem shows I was getting like 200 people a night mm-hmm. um, but also most of them already knew me because I'm signed to them you know what I'm True saying right. so yeah. it's yeah. not like I was gaining new fans like that but yeah you could just hope to get like a honey so yeah. so how are you and Eminem relationship right now it's great um niggas I don't talk to niggas like that unless like you know what I'm saying I, like I don't like asking perfect. for favors you know what I'm saying so what I think is dope about Eminem he know the pressure that that come with being signed to him, so he don't put more on me. He just let me figure it out. Like whatever artist I want to be, just go figure it out. And when you need help, just hit me. And and that's the greatest thing he got. That's me. dope right there. Yeah, cause what? I don't want that nigga telling me what songs to make and rap fast right here and shit right, like that. Right, 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 right. So when y'all did, y'all did, uh, y'all did like a freestyle together. What was that? Was that for BET? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, my one time I did. Um, it seemed like he was this golden goose though, like like yeah. he was the nigga for his label. Like to me, that's what I, I saw. Him. You yeah. still nah, nah, them niggas hard. Niggas hard. I love my label mates, but I'm always feel like I'm the best. I feel like I'm better than Eminem. So you supposed to? I feel to. like you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's just that. Like yeah. with that being said, are you the first uh, Shady Records artist? No, nah, I mean Fifty was first, right? I mean, besides like, new, 50, but nah, then, yeah, to the then, modern, like era. modern, they had uh, Griselda. Um, okay, oh, D2 Griselda. Or some shit. They, they had D12 in there. D12, D12. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, talking about new era, era. But yeah, so that's not that. the name of the label, D12. D12 no, no, was a no, group. That was a group. Yeah, that he was a part of. So the label is called Shady Ray. Yeah, correct. Okay, and you're still signed. You signed the Shady Aftermath. Yeah, Shady Aftermath Interscope. Yeah. So it has Aftermath on it. You have something to do with Dre or? I actually don't know if it's Shady Aftermath. It might just be yeah, Shady. It might records. just be yeah. Shady. I don't have nothing to do with Aftermath. It's for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I've never yeah. been Dr. Dre in my life. And I, I, I want to, of course, because it's Dr. Dre, but... It is, it is. I mean, that would be dope. Yeah, that should be, yeah, that should be, yeah. I'll be trying to figure out why niggas reached out, because it's like... Just, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's time. It's, 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 <laughs> it's time right here. It's time. Yeah, man, we have fucking grind for you so should. fucking yeah, long, dog, man. so... Just to see you doing your own fucking tour was just amazing. How many people came out and shit. Yeah, yeah, so now you, you had a chance to, like, you, you of course you got people opening up for you and mm-hmm. shit. 
So you remember how people did you when you was open up? So you did you kind of like exactly. do I'm glad them you, good? I'm like, glad you pointed out. I try to make sure my openers feel like headliners. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. them niggas could always text me. Y'all want to come to my green room? Pull up as long as you ain't too deep. They know they good and they feel like family. That's why every nigga I ever went on tour with asked to go on tour with me again. Like, cause you don't be able yeah, to and they know my shows late, so it's like yeah. Okay, all right. Look, I'm gonna talk real briefly about this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, 2016, dropping your third mixtape, Thirst 48. But now the cover of it, Jamisa is scratched off on the cover. Mm -hmm. So y'all remember Thirst 48 one? Y'all, yeah. you was hugging mm -hmm. on the cover. Then the reach, then now Thirst 48 two. Her face is scratched off. What was that about? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm drinking. <laughs> so this one is. <laughs> So you know what I'm saying, bro? Before you answer yeah. that question, do you have creative control? Of yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so this is, is no. That's why I want. That's why I want. But all right, let's what you said. I'm, I gotta be like, I gotta be like mindful about this because she do have a baby by my cousin now. Oh, yeah, we had, do I don't talk to my my cousin. Don't talk to me no more. You know how when niggas guilty about stuff, yeah, like, tell wow, stuff. Wow, they like wow, it just it just registered to me what you just said. Yeah, Jamie, cousin, double. Y'all used to be together, and then now she has a baby by your cousin. My blood cousin. Man, and I like get Jamie. Nah, all right, go. Um, so, but yeah, I'm gonna, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, just because yeah. I'm being mindful, of it, just because my mother and his mother, you know what I'm saying? Just start back talking. So I'm trying to be mindful of that, but at the same time, tell the he's, truth. He's a kind-hearted yeah. nigga, dog. <laughs> Go ahead, though, man. But what was also, that? What was we that? Also, also, right, right. Right. also, 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 Crazy. But at that time, yeah, we was broken up. Um, she always, at that time, she was threatening to sue me all the time. Like, I didn't have moments where she had called Zoe, like, tell him to stop saying my names and songs, or I'm a lawyer up, like, shit like that. And so I wanted to still use, like, the Search 48 concept, but just show them what stage I'm at in my life. So I whacked her face out. Like, <laughs> and it's really a picture of them hugging, <laughs> right? And then, like, yeah. her face is like she. <laughs> So she out, felt like, oh, to get that upset that she wants to sue. Yeah. But you had a baby with this man. Yeah, exactly. Forget Jay Lisa. And I, I also and I also never like was disrespectful in songs. It was all, always just talking about how I felt type shit. Shout out to them though. It's like me having somebody I really love and then they go have a a, a, a baby by bear. I really yeah. tell you about boy. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like what the fuck are you yeah. doing? Yeah. But also like it's just a lesson. Like maybe sometimes you should just like. Not cross that line with friends, cause then I think about the ten years of friendship I lost for like for nothing, for real. But I did. I don't know. I learned some lessons through it. Well, look, we gonna switch up off of that. We gonna yeah. change the subject. Yeah. I, 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 I gotta I got to get to the nitty gritty. Cause I hear you, bro. I hear you, bro. Yeah. You're on that line, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you I, supposed I, to be right there, yeah. following <laughs> it. <laughs> Dumping back. I hear you, you know man. I mean? I this hear is an interview. You. Man, look, but I really wanted to ask you this, though, being serious. Like, growing up in Los Angeles, it's like, what artists influenced you that's from our area, from L.A.? Mm, from that's L.A. A good uh, yeah. Early, I say DJ Quick, just like. Man, come on. I'm alive. That's like my favorite, like, I, L.A. artist. Man, I like, love You know what Quick. I'm saying? So, Quick, just like, how he rapped on soulful beats. It, I think that's part the of the sound. reason why I rap <laughs> on those type beats. You know what I'm saying? And. Early too, YG shit was was hard when I was yeah. like when when niggas just being from LA trying to figure out how to get on not not necessarily Sound like push the push like you know what I'm saying how he had a push click behind him yeah, and man. he turned it into a company that shit was hard and game nigga game yeah. top three LA artists to me all time I, I love that shit too mm -hmm. and then probably number one is Kendrick though okay <laughs> so look that's crazy with saying that I was gonna ask you. Um, what was it like doing roped off with game and problem in your apartments? Like that shit was hard. Like, I feel like that's one of the days I was like, "Yeah, I'm a star." That was, <laughs> I was one of them days because the hood was outside, nigga. It was so many niggas outside, Deep and I was like, fuck. "Yeah." And it's like, damn, it's so many niggas at that video shoot that's not that that's not here today that we <laughs> lost and that mm -hmm. shit. I was trash shirts, man. Rest their soul, man. Yeah, but that was a dope moment. Um, and that's why I miss weed so much because. I was like, fuck the label. Most of my relationships came from Weeder. Push it. Got you. Push like, it's, it's, 
it's more organic. Like labels could connect you with niggas, but that organic shit, Weeder was outside for me. Like this is my little nigga Boog. He rap like mm -hmm. making niggas take pictures with me. Um, I remember one time I was at the club with Weed and OT Genesis was there, and my label was on me about getting content. Yeah, and I was man. like, Weed, can you take this picture of me and OT Genesis? He's like, Blood, I ain't your fucking photographer. <laughs> no, no, did not say you kind of demand him. No, to take the my God. God. No, you did not say that. No, I heard about it. You didn't say like, no, Weed, take the picture. No, he kind of like said, like, hey, nah, take the picture. Nah, 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 nah. He was tripping. <laughs> he said he pressed Weed. Y'all think yeah. I'm going to do that? Oh, Y'all think I'm going to do that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was off the <laughs> yeah. Now we 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 oh man, That's we was heart. a true big homie man. And I ain't gonna what? say was because he, he still is. is. Still, 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 still making shit happen still from still. the feds. We, we, we gotta get my boy Instagram page. Right? You know what I mean? We yeah. gotta get the real one back because y'all don't even know, man. Yeah. Like I done been state to state and just you know Everywhere what I mean. We, we just the ties. You know how it go, man. man. Like come on, facts. Everywhere we go, them niggas <laughs> for real. You feel what I'm saying? You could be one day you in the hood, the next day you at Diddy Mansion. <laughs> nigga, no, <laughs> then no, yeah. nowhere you at an after party with the Migos. Yeah. Yeah. With so Cardi B and them, straight like that. That's that's right. You know what I mean? Facts, facts, facts. Free so he, he opened a lot of doors for us. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And. and you know, it's some people that still fuck with us. A lot of people, since we've been gone, we're going to keep it true. They do not come nah, over no more, facts. come deal with us no more. But it's, it's some that still do. And I'm Man, I mean, do. it done been multiple artists such as, you know what I mean, Future, Vezo, DC, Fly done came. Nah, you know what I mean? I remember Everybody. it was one year. It you know, seemed Vezo, like it was Vezo still come. It was, no, yeah. Peace. It was one year. It felt like it was a, nigga, a celebrity in the hood every day when we was out. That shit was yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. It started to fuck up. Back to that roped up video, man. It was a uh, man, niggas. You know, problem my boy now. But niggas nah, was giving problem a hard time at that video. Man, that's when, that's the day I was like, man, I gotta make sure my politics stay right. Niggas was giving problem a hard time though. And you know why? Let's put it out there though. You know, shout the, out to problem. Shout I'm out to problem. We, yeah, I'm shout out to problem. A little loaded, problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> problem came to the uh, to the boss Max show and did an interview there. So I, I feel. And like I ain't gonna lie, he was he wasn't like. Awesome, like, no, like, no, no, he, he was saying enough no, for himself. No, he was. No, for he, sure he, he was. Grew, for he sure grew, he was. He, grew he up, just caught him off guard. Yeah, that's more yeah. so. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Caught him off guard. And he grew up on the phone with L. Ducky and Baby Aiden. Yeah, right. yeah, literally so, right across the street. He knew that they wasn't going to let nothing yeah. happen to him. But the only thing was, it was like, we was putting all our our passion and everything we got into this Rosecrans shit. And then him and DJ Quick make a tape called Rosecrans and then put a, a banner, a billboard, Rosecrans billboard, right up in our motherfucking hood, just right up in our motherfucking face. Ain't ask us about it, ain't talk to us about it. But so see, man, I was gonna that. say, but on that situation, to dumb it down, you know, they came through, hollered, After all, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 we all hollered, they yeah. Of, when they figured niggas was tripping at the video yeah. show, then he got with, with Quick and they came through, hollered at us, and it was squashed. We appreciate that. Oh, I do remember hearing that. Yeah, 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 I didn't know what that show was about. But before that, it was, it was an issue. We, got a we felt they tried to steal Rosecrans from us. You Quick, know, you know, coming yeah. to the apartments and taking a picture with yeah, the homies yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, it was, it was like one of them things where you know what I mean. It was just a misunderstanding. Definitely. And we got it all in line. And that's what's so dope about the city because like niggas are getting contact and niggas, fast. niggas are meet up fast. fast. You have <laughs> older, you know, you know how it goes. You got yeah, older fast. homies who was around with Big J yeah, and fast. you know other cats that was involved in this music stuff. So it's nothing to get in touch with people that we might can't get in touch with because we're too young, you know what I mean? But it's easy to, you know, reach out to those resources. Definitely. So what's next for Bug, man? What you, what's going on? What, uh, what I got doing? my, well, I leave for my first European headlining tour in two weeks. So I'll be gone for about a month and a half. What um, cities? It's like 11 dates. Uh, European tours Ooh. since you need your passport yeah, for straight that. up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then right after that I'm booked for a festival in Africa it's my first time in Africa so I leave from the European tour and fly to Africa for two shows and then I come back Mm. Oh, you going to the motherland going to the motherland I got to get malaria shots they saying and some more shit I've never been there so just trying to prepare myself are you nervous a little bit like I'm more so just dealing with anxiety over this long ass flight I'm trying to like Start meditating and prepare myself mentally. Cause it's either I'm gonna do a Zan, and I'm trying not to have to do a Zan. I didn't want to say that. Died, yeah. 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 Man, man, I was gonna say the real. I mean, that's what I take. Exactly. But we're not gonna promote it. I'm scared of the Zan on the air. We're 
not gonna promote it, but we just said so people that's something that helps that's you sleep. Yeah, we're talking know. about real. Yeah. We're talking about prescribed. Yeah, I you know, got it from a doctor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you're might. gonna have anxiety. If yeah, you I have might. anxiety when you're getting on the plane, so, a doctor can prescribe you that to help you. So, you know what I mean? Relax. Need that because of the flight is what sixteen hours, ten hours. Yeah, I think it's like two twelve hour flights. God or like, damn. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's, 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 that's a whole 24 hours. Correct. Yeah, it's nasty work. So look, I wanted to ask you this. What future projects you got coming up and what artists are you working with right now? So I st- I'm supposed to be like done with my, I promised my label I'll be done with my next album like by the time I left for tour. And okay. I don't even got a song done for real. But I'm a, I, a I got, I, mean, <laughs> I, got, I, I always, I always, I always got songs, but yeah. I'm saying, I know when I'm in. Like, it's always that one song that let me know, okay, I'm an album mode for real. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? And I don't got that song yet. Uh, so, Dark coming with me on tour, who my engineer. So, hopefully, I might knock the album out on tour. On tour. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Once you catch a rhythm, you can catch a rhythm. It's, <clears throat> it's all about finding that beginning stage. Real shit. So, what's that? Okay, because um, everything for sale. Mm-hmm. Talk about that project, man, because that's your baby, right? That's, that's, my, your... that's my favorite project of all time. Okay. Uh, Talk about the process of that project and everything that you put into that process. Um, it was that was my first time working with LVRN and doing a project with like somebody giving their opinions through the process outside of like Kill and Dark, who my best friends. Um, it was mm-hmm. Justice sitting in the studio with me every day and pushing me to like be the best version of myself. Um, and that was the first time I was ever in there. And the nigga like, you need to try a different flow out. You rapping the same way every song, and that's why on the intro I'm like rapping off beat a little bit, doing like some poetry shit, cause he was just making me try different flows and that shit opened my brain up for real. Um yeah, so that process was dope, just having justice there. Like I liked when you had uh old girl come through with the harp and we was all there. Oh yeah and yeah what man that was so LVR an idea. Like stuff like that. Was like yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I was against it. I thought that shit was gonna be trash because I was just like when she had to Yeah, yeah. when she was yeah. playing that harp. She I don't feel like but, and especially cause niggas Behind me couldn't even really hear what I had in my ear, so it was hella uncomfortable for me rapping like to this beat when niggas behind me don't really hear the beat. But that shit was funny as hell. That shit came out dope. Cause it was like to me it gave the concept of like a heart in the hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's like the, the was yeah, exactly. it was when a, you like the, the duality of that, oh, or like yeah. some beautiful shit and the crazy. <laughs> yeah. That shit always gonna be hard. Yeah, yeah. I like how you do. Like you had a lot of projects where like you use the houses in the hood and shit. Mm-hmm. And then don't the label kind of like pay people? To, to yeah. Um, so I like how you and yeah, that also, to the neighborhood. Yeah, because look, you got you got to think about it. Like if this money labels put aside for a budget to pay for stuff. Correct. So why not give it to your niggas? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why not go shoot over here? They finna, you want to go pay a random warehouse when you can just go to your hood and pay somebody pay for some, a house? Come on. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, and plus the homies not going to do, as much as they love me, they going to start acting for bread anyway. I remember like being at the video shoots, niggas from the hood was like, where our money at, blood? So, <laughs> the homies going to get that bread anyway. I ain't got to say nothing. These niggas probably signed so it. They better give it to them. Yeah. I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't sign no papers. Nah. They got the ass. Securities and stuff. We Facts. were damn checks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. So, any for do you have any advice for any up and coming artists that you know the pros and cons of this record, this record mm. label type shit? Hell yeah, I be man, I be trying to give so much game please to artists game now, up. but please school. It's just a, it's just a sad game. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. The music, like, it's cool to be a rapper. But like the music business, like mm-hmm. the industry, it's a dark place. You know what I'm saying? And like, it will fuck you over with a pen. And if you don't, if you're not strong minded, if you ain't got thick skin, you gonna fold. Um, because my honest shit is how much social media matter now. It's like mm. quality matter, but it's also the quantity of how much you posting on social media. And that's and that's the thing I battle with all the time. Is like. Staying consistent on social media because that's really what matters now. It's going how you gonna cut through all the noise? All right, you think about it. It's, social media gave all these niggas platforms to be rappers now. It's a beautiful Correct. thing. Now you don't need to like go stand out a label building to go like uh, get get a deal. You could just be consistent on Instagram and go take and, over. Yes, yeah, but also it's gave this platform for everybody to re- be rappers. It's a good and bad with that because now it's gonna be harder to cut through because like so it's so many niggas that rap good. You know what I'm saying? If I got signed. Now, 
I, it'll be hard for me because I just got bars and this nigga's like, you got reason, you got cash, you got a bunch of niggas from LA who got bars, but like, how you gonna cut through? How you gonna separate? And it's like, that comes from showing your personality. It's a different time now. It's not like you can hide in the mystery and pop out every five years like Kendrick because nigga, that's not gonna work for you. Right. You're not Kendrick. It's right. a different time now. Right. Now people are going to gravitate towards your personality and what type of person you are. It got to match the music. If you're just trying Correct. to be mysterious, you cooked. Because nobody going to support that. They're trying to get behind the person now. And that's my advice to people is learn to be fearless on social media and just understand, yeah, bad going to come with it. People going to have their opinions. But the love is what matters for real, for real. Now, even though that you're signed to a label, I had a question for you. Do you prefer that these young artists stay independent or do you prefer that they actually go for a label or, you know, try to, you know what I mean? So, I think it's just different for every artist. It just depends on the team you got around you because it's like, it's, it's just a bank. That's Correct. all the label is. It's it's like, exactly. So it's like, if you want to go buy some property, do you want these? Do you want to go get a loan from the bank to help you buy this property and you go pay them back later? Or do you want to stack your own money to go buy this property? Correct. That's really all the label is. Like, do Correct. you want to pay for stuff on your own? Do you want yeah, to pay for stuff? Down to them. You want to pay for stuff on your own now mm -hmm. and, and get like your money back later? Or do you want somebody else to pay for it now and then you pay them back later? Yeah, it's that's, as far as a loan. That's yeah. all it is. Um, so it's basically and, your choice, I think. Yeah, like, but, there is, but there is also departments at labels. Like, they got a whole department for marketing. And they got relationships that you might not have um, to go to do something like how I just did uh, NPR colors when you know the shit in the, like the library, the office looking thing. Oh yeah, uh, okay. yeah. That was like a career moment for me. I've been asking them to do that since I got signed. And if you don't got no type of relationship there, it's you gonna can't make do that. You gotta wait till they come talk to you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta wait till they can reach out for you. So Interscope, labels could make yeah, certain Interscope gave me a publicist. My publicist reached out and got it for me. But also, if you got your own bag, go find a publicist. Correct. And go and tell you them to go do it. Yeah, so it's really like however you want to play the game. I don't think it's no right or wrong answer. What's wrong is what labels, how labels prey on people who they know need a bag. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I no. think, and that's why I think people get mad at when they like come wave a hundred bands in somebody in the nigga face who know that it changes life, and he, he gives, and he gonna give them ninety percent is everything to you get know that hundred bands. Just to get that hundred bands right yeah. now, but. It's tough, but how are you gonna tell a nigga to say no to that when he can change his life right now? So that's I think that's the scandalous part because I guess the the deals could be set up different. But you can't also get mad at this billion dollar company for like thinking like hustlers because at, at the core of that, at the core of it, that's what they are. They hustlers. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, like, yeah, I'm about you can't get mad at them for that. You they taking a the gamble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's why it's tricky. It get tricky. That's what's up, man. Any any questions before we get out of here? Uh yeah, I got like probably two more questions to end with. Um, do you and Kendra got anything in the far future, or you know that you? It's so crazy. It's like I I think it's crazy that my first time working with Kendrick is because it, it had to come through my label. Um, because you know I wrote Summer Walker verse for his project, his yeah. last album, and you know I've seen that. Yeah, me and, that. and me and Kendrick, big. we we talk. It's not like we don't talk. I think I'm just so scared to ask that nigga for favors. Like, like, <laughs> I'm just scared. And it's like, also, I don't like asking nobody for nothing, but it's also, this is my favorite rapper. So it's like, I just want to make sure if I ever ask for a favor, I got the greatest song in the world ready. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? saying? You, you really ready. Before I like start asking everybody from the hood, can y'all tell Kendrick to give me this verse? Before yeah. I use that card, I just want to make sure I got the best song ready. So, But look, it was crazy is not to even be, you know, speaking up on it, but when... Nipsey and Kendrick uh, did that verse, and when L uh, dedication, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And L, uh, they had all that shit working, and man, I was sitting on the side of L, and he was telling me like, yeah, man, I got some shit in the works with Dot and uh, Nipsey, uh -huh. and he was like, man, you know, like I, you know, he was like, Dot asked me like, you know, like what type of dude is he? He like, and I told him I was like, man, he a good dude, like you know, he. he Strictly community, you know what I mean? Yeah. And not saying that Dot not familiar with yeah, what yeah. he was doing, no, but you know, he wanted the inside. No, like, you know what I mean? If you know this person, how do you genuinely feel about this mm -hmm. person? And he was like, man, everything was right. And he was like, Dot was like, man, we about to do that. And man, that dedication was probably one of the hardest songs that, yeah, you know. niggas got off. <laughs> that shit was hard. And they shouted out Ill in the song. That shit was fire. So, I know that that's going to come into work for yeah. you. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just as far true. as 
me just even saying it. I know that's coming in the works, but I just wanted to ask you, did y'all have anything as far as in the future or anything, you know what I mean, to drop? I hope not, not right now, but I hope so. And I know if I really need it, I could get it. But I, I just, that shit just made me think of the funniest shit ever. I remember when I went on tour with Tori. I never told nobody this, <laughs> uh, but Tori in jail. <laughs> not like that, but I was on tour with Tori, and the nigga was this one. He was still mad at Drake, and he was just like this before they well, started yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So Tori like on some, I'm ready to rip off the industry head. Yeah, he like, hey Boogie, you ain't got no song with Kendrick. He's supposed to give you a verse. Let's me and you make a Kendrick and Drake diss right now. And the nigga, oh, was trying, wow. the nigga was trying to get me to diss Kendrick. And I was like, nigga, you finna give me shot by the whole Like, hell no, nah, nigga. We the same we the same the same 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 like, hell no, nah, nigga, you gonna do that shit by yourself. But that, that shit was so funny. The nigga asked me, do I want to diss Kendrick? Yeah, Did he end up dissing Drake? So many times. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, he, he wanted to be so the king times. of Toronto. We all know who, who got that on lock, but you know. Shout out to Tory Lanez. <laughs> niggas do have dreams. Last but not least, look, I'm gonna ask you this when we we end it, man. What's your um, Mount uh Mount Rushmore top five West Coast artists, man? I need that right now. West Coast artists. No specific Any order. Shit got me lit. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, West Coast artists. All right. Me, do I put myself on there or don't put myself? I mean, if you want to, but you know, right. what I mean, all you right, can leave not. yourself as a all special, right, like you know, yeah, what yeah, I, mean? I don't want to put myself as an asterisk. Right. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Kendrick number one for me, but no, it's a Mount Rushmore, so yeah, yeah, no, 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 so it's four people, order. four people or five, five. No all right, order. Kendrick, okay. DJ Quick. This is damn. I gotta put Snoop, huh? I do gotta put Snoop. Whoever you want. Oh, yeah, who was on your. Got ah, three listen. more. We got three more. Say Kendrick, Snoop. So Tupac. Pac was tweaking, boy. Exactly. Tupac, Kendrick. Tweaking. Game, Mossberg, Snoop Dogg. And then he threw DJ Quick out. Quick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I took him out. Oh, you took okay. him out? Okay, so this is five. That's his top five, but with itself in there, you know, included. NYG is the honorable mention. Okay. Okay, we'll take that. So, yeah. That's a that's a good that's a good list right there. And like I said, off of that list, you done did a song with Game already. Yep. You know what I mean? Pop is gone. Well for I mean? Kendrick. Yeah. Not for Kendrick. Well for Summer for Walker. Song. That's yeah. a song that's on there. You know so what I mean? So, work together in a way. Mm -hmm. You pretty much done, yeah, you done did a Oh, lot. I got a verse from DJ Quick. Oh, I took that nigga up to him. Yeah, you took him out. Huh? Yeah, I mean, we're going to still add quick with Ash. DJ Quick, you know I mean? yeah, he, he, He's a mention. Yeah. You know, like... uh like they have awards, they mm -hmm. mention you, they yeah, mention exactly. quick. You know what I mean? Because when that's my <laughs> new thing that I want to actually do with like artists this. too, Boog. I want to ask he them their top five good. West Coast. Every You feel me? Because everybody yeah. going to have a difference. Some people going to say Easy e Ice Cube. You know what I mean? You're going to have your selective few different of And my right now I mean, top five West Coast artists. YS, Mari Ruger, Wiley the Sensei, mm. Chef. Mm. Uh, shit, uh, Ashback. 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 She ain't from the hood, but she's from the hood. from the hood now. <laughs> shit. All right, hey. y'all, man. This is another episode uh, stay of dangerous. Stay Dangerous. Stay Podcast. Dangerous, niggas. We really do this shit, man. And, and we, we out. Nothing without y'all. We are out. <laughs>